Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math problem today. Here's the problem we're going to be doing today. Evaluate the definite integral, and the integral we're going to evaluate is the integral from 0 to 1 of cosine of pi times t over 2, dt. So this is another video where I'm showing you how to use the formulas on my Calculus 2 study guide. That just recently came out, and there's a link down in the description where you can check that out. I think it's a huge help to you to help you kind of study for tests quicker and easier and also help you work through your homework faster. So go check out that Calc 2 study guide. It should be a huge help to you for anyone taking integral calculus. But let's go ahead and jump into this problem. So the formula from my study guide that we are using here is the u substitution formula for a definite integral. So let's just start with that formula. So basically the idea here with this formula is it tells us that we want to make some substitution where we're going to say u equals this function g of x where we pick our g of x to be so obviously there's kind of two pieces here we have we have to make our g of x be something that's plugged into some other function so we're looking for some sort of composite function and the other piece you usually want to think about is picking your g of x so that that thing's derivative is also somewhere else in the function that you're integrating so this is an interesting example because the u that we're going to pick is actually just going to be the entire thing within the parentheses here. And you might be thinking, well, that's weird because, you know, the derivative of pi times t over 2 is not somewhere else in the function. However, this is a pretty common trick with integrating with u substitution because even though the derivative of that thing is not somewhere else in the function, the derivative of that thing is just going to be a constant, right? If we say u equals pi times t over 2, basically we could think of this as pi over 2 times t. If you ever just have a constant times your variable, the derivative of this, so our du, is just going to be pi over 2 and then dt. So since our derivative is just a constant times dt, we actually don't really need to make sure that g prime of x is somewhere in there because essentially what that results in giving us is just a constant that we can pull out of the integral. So it makes it a little bit easier. And let me show you what I mean by that. Essentially what we need to do here, now that we've figured this out, we want to plug our u into our integral. So we're gonna replace pi over two times t, which is this whole thing within the parentheses here we're gonna replace that with u. So we're gonna get the integral of cosine of u. And then the other piece we need to figure out is our dt that we had, right? We need to substitute that out as well. Well, we can take this equation here to figure out what our dt is, and we need to rewrite this in terms of u. So what we're gonna do is if we just multiply both sides by two over pi, that'll give us two over pi times du, equals dt. So taking this whole thing here and replacing dt with that, back up to this original integral, that's going to give us this times 2 over pi times du. So now the other piece we need to figure out is the bounds of our integral. Right? This equation says that if we kind of rewrite this, making the substitution u equals g of x, then to figure out our new bounds, we need to just plug our old bounds into our g of x function, function, which is what we just said u was. So if we take 0 and plug it in for our u, which is pi times t over 2, 0 times, or I'm sorry, pi times 0 over 2 is just pi over 0, which is 0. So our lower bound we got from plugging our old lower bound into this function that we said u was is also just going to be 0. And then our upper bound, we need to plug our old upper bound into this function that we called u. So plugging 1 in for t is going to give us pi times 1 over 2, which is just pi over 2. So our new upper bound is just going to be pi over 2. So now that we have rewritten this as some integral in terms of u, we can go ahead and evaluate it. It should give us something easier than what we started with, and we will see that it does, because this constant 2 over pi here, we can just pull out of our integral. So that's going to give us 2 over pi times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine u du. So now we can integrate this function, which the antiderivative of cosine u with respect to u is going to be sine of u 
and we need to evaluate this from 0 to pi over 2. And then remember, this whole thing is going to be multiplied by 2 over pi. So evaluating from this upper bound to this lower bound basically just means plugging in the upper bound, plugging in the lower bound, and subtracting. So this is going to equal 2 over pi is just going to remain out front. Sine of pi over 2 is going to give us 1. And then sine of 0 is going to give us 0. So this just gives us 2 over pi times 1 minus 0, which is just 1. 1 times 2 over pi is just 2 over pi. So like I said, this method and this formula is on my Calc 2 study guide. There's a link down in the description so you can go get that for yourself. It's available for instant download, so you can go get it right now. Thanks, and see you next time.